Hi, thanks for tuning in today. I'm going to be doing a review of the Tyndall Greek New Testament. This one is the uh, black imitation leather or the black true tone. I just got it in the mail today, just in time for the contest that we're doing uh, tomorrow, September 5th, 2020. If it's past September 5th, 2020, and you're interested in uh, maybe a potential chance to uh, win another Greek New Testament or something like that. Uh, just stick with me to the end of the video and I'll, I'll speak a little bit to that. Um, I'm going to be reviewing this in um, six different categories and then towards the end of the video I'm going to do a comparison between uh, this one, the hardcover, and the brown cowhide. They're all in the Tyndall Greek New Testament line, but I want to give a comparison to you uh, so that you can decide which Tyndall Greek New Testament might be the one that you want to pick up. So stick with me here and we'll get into the review. So the first thing I want to talk about is the feel of this. Uh, the leather, um, it's not a an actual leather, it's an imitation leather. Uh, you can see there, hopefully, well, actually, let me just zoom down on this so we can get a better look at it. So as I said, the first um, feature we'll talk about is kind of the cover. Uh, this is an imitation leather. It does not feel um, like real leather, but it does look like real leather. Um, but it feels pretty nice. I really like it. In fact, um, if no one decides to pick this up in the uh, giveaway that we're going to do, if whoever wins decides to get a different Bible than this one, I will not be sorry to have this in my library. I very much like it. Um, so you can see on the outside here, um, it says the Greek New Testament. It's got their symbol there, crossway. And I really like the stitching they've done along the outside. It looks nice. Paste down liner. And... Here we go. Some people are interested particularly in the front matter. So there you are. And uh, so let's talk about the font. This is an addition that they've spent a lot of time thinking about every detail on, including the font. And I really like the font. Um, there's nice spacing between the lines. The words aren't cr uh, cramped together. And you can see they, adversi they advertise a 10-point font. And I think they've got pretty close, yeah, about a 10-point font or a 9.5. Uh, but yeah, 10-point, I think that's right. Looks very nice, uh, very well done. You can see how they've broken up their paragraphs to reflect the ancient manuscripts, and I really like that. Um, so for margin space, um, you've got about five eighths of an inch there, so that's very nice. Uh, so if you like to take notes, there's a little bit of room. I wish there was more because I'm a note taker. Um, in the gutter here, it's gonna be a little harder to write. There's not just a ton of room in the gutter, but, but you could do a little bit um, if you needed to. So uh, margin's pretty nice forgot to mention it's got a nice ribbon marker so that's very nice there's no uh, gilt edges on this particular let's edition. talk about the text itself if you are in the Byzantine camp or in the Texas Receptus uh, camp this might not be your first choice um, I would say that it's good to still have in your library It'd be a good reference work um, but even um, and we'll get in we'll talk about the apparatus a little bit um, but this is primarily reflecting the um, Alexandrian, what's been traditionally called anyways, the Alexandrian text type. Um, and so it is uh, more geared to reflecting what the early manuscripts um, say rather than uh, the later Byzantine majority. So let's briefly talk about the apparatus. The apparatus is sparse by design. Uh, this is really designed to be focused on the main text and um, there is nothing in the main text to alert you when there is a textual variant. You just sort of have to follow along down here. And it basically focuses uh, primarily on the early manuscripts and gives little attention or no, or hardly, yeah, hardly any attention to the later Byzantine manuscripts. So if you're interested in the Byzantine tradition, um, this does not do much in the way of the apparatus to alert you 
to the differences between itself and the Byzantine tradition. Finally, one of the great hallmarks of the Tyndall Greek New Testament is the paper quality. Just excellent, excellent paper. Uh, very little ghosting, uh, very thick paper, so that's outstanding on that part. Well, without further ado, let's get into the part of the video that some of you, it's the only reason maybe you clicked on this video, is to see the differences between uh, these three editions. You've got your hardcover, um, your um, imitation leather, and your uh, genuine brown cow cowhide leather. Um, so, one of the first differences you'll see is how the boxes are done. Your hardcover right now is coming in a nice slip case. Your imitation leather is coming in a clamshell that comes off like that. And your brown cowhide opens up um, like that. So if you're one who likes to keep your uh, boxes to your uh, Bibles and Greek New Testaments, you'll be interested to know that there is a difference in the boxes. So, this brown cowhide um, is one of my favorite Greek New Testaments. Um, I did a review of that, a full review. Um, but right now we're just going to do a comparison between it, the one in imitation leather, and the hardcover one. This is kind of hard to do with just one hand. But they are all approximately the same size. And I will give you the dimensions for each one. But they are all, I'll try to give you a comparison. You can see these all standing up. They all have one ribbon marker. Hopefully I can kind of focus in there. Sorry for the um, disturbance there. Now, one of the things, one of the features that the um, brown cowhide has that the imitation leather does not have is obviously real leather. It also has gilt edges. Um, Kind of a orangish red ribbon marker, which actually looks very nice. This has the black ribbon marker. And there's a definite difference in feel. Um, how long the black true tone will hold up cover wise will hold up much longer or less time than the um, actual brown cowhide. I would have to guess the brown cowhide is just going to last longer. Uh, but I think this is going to be a very durable one as well. Um, obviously the hardcover has its own ribbon marker and these two have no gilt edges. But as far as page layout, I'm going to turn to page 231 and give me just a second I'll lay these all out and we can look at them. And here we are. They all are pretty much exactly same size, same page layout. It's just the same Bible, basically, with a different cover. Okay, so in summary, uh, we reviewed this um, Greek New Testament. Basically, everything I've said about it applies, most everything I've said about it applies to the brown cowhide and the hardcover, except some of the physical qualities like the cover, the gilt edging, and, you know, like the ruin marker, things like that. But basically, they're all the same, um, you know, addition, um, paper quality is comparable, everything's pretty much the same except which cover. So, which one should you get? And I never did, well, I guess you could see the ISBN, I was going to say I never gave you the ISBN number, uh, but I, I think you can see that on the page that I took a picture of. Um, but, uh, which one should you get? So, if you can afford it, if you want the Tyndall Greek New Testament to be your primary, I would say if you can afford it, get the genuine leather. Um, it's going to last you a long time. It's beautiful. feels great. However, if you don't feel up to spending that kind of money on it right now, I would suggest getting this over the hardcover. Now, is this going to last as long as a hardcover? Will the hardcover outlast this? I don't know, and a lot of that's going to depend on how you treat it. However, this feels a lot more 
like a regular Bible. This is something you could take to church and not feel quite so awkward with. And right now, um, you can look at Christian Book um, distributors. They've got good deals on these. So, you know, if you're going to get a Tyndall Greek New Testament and you want something that looks nice and you want it also to be affordable, this one's great. Um, so, as I said at the beginning of the video, I am doing a giveaway on September 5th, 2020. This is one of the options that whoever wins that uh, contest, giveaway, whatever, um, this is one of the options they could pick. Um, <laughs> like I said, I really like it, and it's not going to disappoint me if whoever wins doesn't pick this one, because it's just great. So, however, I realize that the majority of the people who are going to be watching this video are probably going to be watching it after September 5th, 2020. So the reason I did the giveaway was to just kind of say thank you to all the people who've been subscribing to my channel. I do a lot of things about, you know, Greek New Testaments, um, Bible reviews, and things that interest me as I'm reading through the text in Greek and studying the Bible, just kind of sharing things uh, like that. And I just want to give a big thank you to the people who have been subscribing. So I did this giveaway. It's been so much fun that I've decided, um, Lord willing, to possibly do um, another giveaway um, when I hit the 250 subscriber mark. So if you're watching this after September 5th, 2020, look at how many subscribers I have. And um, if I haven't hit 250 yet, you might think about hitting the subscribe button because we may be doing another giveaway in the future. And uh, so let me know in the comment section below, is this something that you would like to see in a potential future giveaway? And guys, thanks a lot again for watching. So much fun doing these and sharing with you my love for books, love for the Bible. Praise God and the Greek New Testament. It's just a joy to be sharing this with you because obviously if you're watching this video, you love the Bible too. And it's a real blessing to me to be able to share with you my love for the church.